Here's an unlikely supplement that can actually help you build muscle. Probiotics. That's right. Uh, some studies show that having the right kind of bacteria in your gut increases the absorption of key amino acids. What's that mean? Well, it means that the protein that you eat is better utilized for building muscle. This may be why some people can eat less protein and get better gains than other people. Of course, there's lots of other factors, but this may be one of those factors. It's pretty freaking remarkable. Cool thing is that probiotics are inexpensive. They also help with digestion, inflammation, and they just make you feel better. So if you're trying to build muscle, this may be the next supplement you should invest in. On a scale mm -hmm. of one being worthless, 10 being the best way to use it, where would you rate the way I use my probiotics? Rectally. <laughs> <laughs> Describe it. <laughs> Fuck, I set myself up, so man. That's direct. That's direct. Man. The bottle no, says take it orally. No, out. you know how it, <laughs> that's you know what I mean by that. <laughs> Jesus, I laid that I one I think up you for use you. it, uh, so you use it more acutely. Like. Yes, right. So the way I, I, I'm... I'm not very consistent with taking it every single day, but what I'm good about doing is you do like preemptively bad yes. meal. Take this. Yeah. Like I know like Katrina loves, you know, burgers, right? That's like her, her favorite. Like <laughs> you just put it on her. I do. I do. I put it on my blame. Her. My blame, wife likes blame the wife. Food, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I take ownership of my ice cream addiction, but it's <laughs> the, the burgers are her fault. So, or pizza, right? Those are two, probably the, the things. And both those things <clears throat> are just like a, a gut bomb for me. I know yeah. that they're amazing going down, but I can, just count on the next 24 hours after that just being uh, like just not feeling great right feeling the bloat the stool being off etc but when i do a good job of remembering to take my seed right before um i go into that meal it really mitigates how i feel from it so i know it's working and it helps but uh, honestly if i had to have you rate me on a scale of one to ten as far as the effectiveness of that what would you kind of rate that? So the best analogy I could give would be this, right? So um, there are clear mood and um, just just general feeling enhancing effects of exercise. Studies will show this. But there's two types, there's, or there's, should I say two ways that exercise improves the way you feel. One is the acute release of endorphins, immediate release of catecholamines, I feel good. Two is this kind of compounding effect that over time just gives you a better general sense of well-being. What you're experiencing is something like that. So you're getting the acute effects, but what you're missing are the cumulative long-term effects, which I think is uh, where you get, I mean, actually not where I think, this is where the studies show all, most of the benefits come from. So using it on a daily basis, mm. way better. Now you're still getting some benefit, it's just way better to use it on a. So you're not just playing catch up, like an intervention kind of a mentality towards it. Yeah, I, I've been meaning to go in that direction. It is one of those you know right away if you have any gut issues, how hard it is to make progress with your performance in mm -hmm. the gym, or you, whether or not you're you're trying to alter your composition or anything. It's like if you're fighting internally, that's just one of those things. It's gonna it's gonna set you back. Well, it's easy, right? Um, uh, so you mentioned seed. That's a company we work with. So literally, this is how you take them before you go to bed on an empty stomach. That's it. Keep it on your on your nightstand with a little bit of water. Take it right before you go to bed every single night, and you're set. But I'm gonna this is what listen to what some of these studies show. Using the right kind of probiotics, bacteria improves absorption of glutamine. So glutamine is the most abundant amino acid in skeletal muscle by 116%. Uh, ornithine by 100%, tryptophan by 100%, citrulline, this is the amino acid mm. everybody takes to get a better mm. pump, 128%. Leucine, 23%, isoleucine, 20%, and valine by 7%. Those are the branching amino acids that people will supplement with to- Wait a second. So by taking that, I'm getting a butter uptake? Is that what you're Correct. saying? Utilizing more of it. Correct. Yeah. Wow, that's So it would be like eating that. less protein- but getting the same kind of result. Now, now, here's what's interesting about that. And I know this it's way more complex. So I'm not stupid enough to think this is the only thing. This is way more complex than this. But years ago, we interviewed uh, Ben Pakolsky, a professional IFBB bodybuilder. Yeah. Also, one of the smartest uh, people I've ever met. Massive when he was competing. Massive bodybuilder. Um, and then now he's he's tried to reduce his size. He wants to be more athletic, whatever. What's funny about that is he's still giant. But uh, but anyway, I remember having this conversation with him. We were interviewing him, and I had this crazy misconception 
we were talking about bodybuilders and their crazy genetics. And I remember saying, oh, and, you know, bodybuilders are so, they're so genetically gifted to build muscle because this, that, and the other. And man, they must have incredible digestive systems to be able to digest that many all those calories. Yeah. And he goes, he looks at me and he goes, no. He goes, pro bodybuilders can eat less and build way more muscle. He said, somebody who's not like that would have to eat way more to get that food to turn in the muscle. A bodybuilder could eat, you know, less calories and still build tons of muscle. Mm -hmm. And it may, that this reminded me of that. It's like, uh, you're giving 50 grams of protein to somebody, 50 grams of protein to their twin, identical circumstances, but this person has an optimized gut, let's say, or they're, they use these, these probiotics, they're going to utilize more of those amino acids. So it's just so valuable because everyday life is not perfect. Right. Most people are not hitting their, their protein targets every single day, plus the inflammation, plus the digestive issues, plus all the downstream immune effects uh, that come from that. And probiotics are just, it's an easy, simple, hey, you want to improve your health? Hey, you want to sleep better? You want better skin? Oh, and it builds more muscle? Take this before we go to bed every night and boom. Watch what happens. Well, of course. I mean, it's like the the goal isn't to just uh, have to eat six thousand calories, you know, at some point to get up like way the hell up there in terms of like it's about like really using the amount of food to its its maximal potential. Totally. Doesn't that doesn't that make you wonder? Like we talk a lot on the show about like you know people certain people have these like muscle building genetics yeah. that if that maybe that is actually the biggest part of that. Like it's it's actually less that they have this like you know, uh, you know, tendon or skeletal structure or response that happens from it. But Dude. it's actually that they can eat w w significantly less than the average person and utilize the, the max amount of nutrients. I wouldn't be surprised if that has as much, if not more, to do with what we refer to as like, oh, they have yeah. great muscle building. I genetic. will never forget this. Uh, when I first became a trainer back in 1997 – I remember there was this uh, guy that worked in the club, uh, Marvin, okay? And he was a porter, so he cleaned the club. So he, he didn't work the front desk and some, he, was, he literally just cleaned the club. And the dude's arms were just muscular and jacked, in particular his triceps, he's these huge triceps. And I remember being, like, you know, I was a kid, I was into building muscle, and you know, you notice these things being very impressed, real nice guy. And I remember being like, oh man, what does he do? So I remember talking to him, and uh, we were hanging out one day, and I, and I was, you know, making friends with him or whatever. And he's like, man, I got to get back into working out. Uh -huh. I'm like, what do you mean you got to get back into working out? I'm like, you look crazy. He goes, well, every once in a while, I'll do some pull-ups and some dips and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, man. I said, you must eat, like, crazy. I said, for me to build muscle, I have to, like, force feed myself. And he goes, no, man. He goes, I don't eat that much at all. And I'm like, well, what would you eat today? He goes, I had a pop. I swear to God. He goes, I had a Pop-Tart. And then this is lunch I have. He's, he was eating a 99 cents cheeseburger. So I totally thought he was full of shit. I remember telling my general manager, who was my good friend, Don. He's one of my, my mentors. You guys know who he is. And I remember telling him, being like, dude, Marvin's full of crap, dude. He's like this and that. He's like totally roided up on whatever. He goes, he lives in his car, bro. He lives in his car around the corner. The guy can't even afford a house or, or to, to pay rent. So I'll never forget that. So that was my first taste of like, that's crazy. You yeah. know, the dude barely ate. Barely worked out. Justin and, and I had a guy that it. worked at uh, Santa Teresa at the same time that were so he'll remember him, Jerry. Jerry, yep. And this black dude, and and he was. Work all I time. mean, abs, shoulders. This just dude was pushing. Jacked. Looked like he could get. He was always two weeks out from stage. Yeah. <laughs> and you, if you saw, he skipped breakfast. Strong he, as an ox. Dude. Loved Taco Bell. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ate candy. Like that was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. God. And you yeah. ask him about his diet, like that's yeah. pretty much what it comprised. And you were just like, what? Yeah. And then you watch the way he trains and train all crazy. I mean, he was strong, strong, strong guys like that, but just, and he looked like that all the time. So for people who are like thinking like, oh, this is baloney, like look this up. Okay. They're, they don't have studies on muscle building uh, directly yet. There's just studies that show amino acid concentrations going up, which would be a good thing. But they do have studies on animals and fat and they'll take obese mice and lean mice and they literally transfer the microbiome of one mouse to the other mm. and all of a sudden this mouse will become obese this one becomes lean nothing else changes yeah this it's great now it's very complex and all that, but it's just to go it just goes to show you how much of an impact uh this can have so it's like you know if you're just trying to like look better um a high quality 
probiotic uh, is probably something you should include in your arsenal. Well, I'm yeah, I imagine I was just thinking about that with that study because it's like, yes, you get the immediate benefits of the bacteria that, you know, help you to promote like you eating better and your habits and whatnot. Like, but overall, like your, your overall health increases substantially yeah. on the in, internally, which, you know, allows you, I think, to, to be more in a building anabolic state, right? Yeah, totally. All right. Today's giveaway uh, program is MAPS Performance. This is an athletic muscle building style program. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win the program, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale right now. MAPS Anabolic is 50% off and MAPS Split is 50% off. If you're interested in either one or both of them, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Yeah, so sorry. speaking of working out, I was working out last night at the uh, Fitness 19 in Morgan Hill. And uh, um, no exaggeration. I, not only that, I, I took a little video clip without looking totally creepy and weird so I could prove this this point or th what I saw. Six dudes wearing wife beaters. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Six. They're all Sal followers. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. All yeah. under the age of 17, but six of hey, these. <laughs> at some point. The style is going to come around. Is that, is that, has it ever like? I don't think it left, ever. Though? I don't think it left. I think it just. I think it's just. It's very few have continued it on beyond high school. Is what it is. I think at Fitness Nineteen over there, it seems like all the high school kids all come and work out at that place, yeah. and they're all over, and they all peel down and, and yeah. I mean, black black wife beaters, gray wife beaters, and white wife beaters. Oh, yeah. 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 It's a hey, listen. It's less for me about style and more about not caring. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just happen to have it on. Yeah, and this shirt is now hot. I'm gonna take it off. I mean, I I consider that with my whole like skater kind of like uh, surfer outfit. Like it, I got stuck in like junior high. Yeah, mm. like and I feel like Sal's maybe still stuck Sal's little. <laughs> You still stuck in, in that mode. You guys, you guys in act, the gym. Hold on, I don't know. Yeah, hold on a second. Maybe, you, maybe that's your like, you guys time act capsule. Like I at some point in my life chose. To wear these. I was born. <laughs> well, you kind of do. I was, I was born in this. <laughs> I was born like this. Listen, I'll Where show the, you guys Lady pictures. Gaga, so. There's a picture. I, yeah. I got to find it. There's a picture of me, my cousins and I uh, and some people. And we're all sitting there. And we're little. We're like two years old, okay? Yeah. And I'm like, pick out the freaking ethnic kid. Because I'm the one with the big ass gold chain. And probably like two <laughs> big old cross. And I'm like, oh, that kid looks like his parents came off the bed. Spaghetti stain <laughs> over here. <laughs> you know? like, that's, that's what I, Dude, I got to tell you guys. Uh, uh, just a great. Story. Well, I mean, funny story. So we flew back from um, Phoenix, right? So we come back and uh, me uh, in the airport, I'm texting with my wife. Okay. So we were in, uh, in Phoenix for a few days. It was a NCI event, which was great. We talked about it in a previous podcast. And during that period of time, um, my wife was uh, alone with the two kids. And I'm, you know, we're talking back and forth and what's going on. And day one, right? Day one, we're there. Hey, honey, how you doing? Good morning. Oh, man, terrible sleep. The baby was just, she was up every hour. I think she has a bit of a cold. So I'm like, damn, okay, that's going to hopefully get better sleep, you know, tomorrow night. Second night. Again, oh, my God, terrible. I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad. This mm -hmm. is going to be real bad. Mm -hmm. uh, when, at one point, I call her. I hear the two-year-old screaming in the background. And, you know, again, she's by herself. So I'm like, what am I going to come home to? Like, this is going to be, <laughs> oh, no. this is going to be crazy. Oh, no. So I land, get on the phone, and she's just, you know, wife is just, She's losing it. I hear my son screaming. She's upset because she yelled at him. She doesn't like yelling. She never yells at the kids, but if she does, she feels bad about it. She's trying to put the baby down. He won't let the put, you know, it's just, it's nuts. So I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is, I got to get home. So I get in the car, I'm driving and uh, I call her and all I hear is screaming in the background and I hang up, right? <laughs> so then she FaceTimes me. Now I can't when well, my phone is hooked up to Bluetooth. Yeah, you can't FaceTime. I can't FaceTime. Right. So I, I'm like, honey, I can't. And I hear my son screaming, I wanna say papa. I wanna <laughs> say papa. <laughs> and she's like, You better get I'm gonna swear I'm gonna leave the house. I'm gonna leave them by myself. You know, she's losing it, right? So I'm like, hold on, let me disconnect so I can disconnect from Bluetooth so I can call and whatever. So I disconnect from Bluetooth. This is while I'm driving. And then I FaceTime. So now I'm driving and FaceTiming. Very dangerous. Not supposed to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. And I see my son, he's, oh, whatever. And I'm like, hey, buddy, I'm going to be home. I'm on my way. It's all good. Meanwhile, CHP, yeah, I'm on the freeway. 
CHP rolls by and then hits their brakes and slows down. And I know, oh, they saw me. You um, saw so I'm like, where their eye. I'm like, honey, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna. I'm about to get pulled over. Yeah. I'm about to. Uh, this is. I'm, I know they're gonna. And then they get behind me, and I'm still on, but I'm holding. The this phone is down face here. butt now. Yeah, yeah and I'm holding it down here. I'm like, I got to pull over there. And then sure enough, lights come on. I'm like, oh, oh, I'm gonna get pulled over. So I hang up. I pull over, and uh, the dudes come out of the car. Right. So now while they're pulling me over. Like we're big supporters of, of the, <laughs> we're big supporters of law enforcement. This is true. You listen to our episodes. We have friends and family, and they do a job a lot of people couldn't do. It's a tough job. So I'm like, I hope they listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Please, God. I'm like, you know, that yeah, would be yeah. so rad. Yeah. You know, if they listen to the show. So I had to pull. I had to pull off the freeway first of all, and they kept speaking through the loudspeaker because I think they thought I didn't know, you know, to pull over. And I'm yeah. like, no, I'm trying to get off and. So then they get out, and I look in the rearview mirror. Tell me the guy's jacked. Is he jacked? He's good odds for so you? listen, they both look like they work out. Okay. One of them looked like he competed. So you got like a 50-50 uh-huh. shot here. Okay. One of them's like, well, they both look fit, right? But one of them looked like he like competed. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. yeah. Like, I'm I got it in. In, for sure, right? Yeah. So they come up, and they look through the window, and I'm expecting them to be like, oh, I listen to your show. You know? <laughs> you oh, are, thank you, you, officer. You know, No problem. You want a free program? No. Yeah. They didn't, my to, wrist. They, they didn't listen to the show. So the dude, the dude looks at my car and he goes, uh, and I'm waiting for that. He didn't say anything. He goes, do you know why we uh, pulled you over? Now, you know, as a grown man, as a grown wiser man, knowing that they're doing it, I'm like. You know, they already know. I did the whole lying yeah. thing when I was a kid. We right. try to act like you're smart, you know, yeah. and that just backfires. So I'm like, hey, man, I said, I understand you guys doing your job. I said, I was on FaceTime right now. And I just told him the truth. I'm like. My wife's losing her shit. I <laughs> said my kid was calling me, <laughs> screaming on the phone, and so they kind of chuckle a little bit, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I had to Facetime my kid because like my wife was like losing it, and the kids were losing it, and we're going, you know, I'm telling them the whole story, and the guy's like, you know, license and registration. I said, here you go, and I look at the dude that's all Jack. I'm like, you don't listen to my show? Oh no, this is what it was. I go, uh, they go, where, where were you coming from? I said, I came from work. They're like, what do you do for work? I said, and I'm like, oh, here's my chance. I'm like, oh, I, I'm the host of Mind Pump. <laughs> Nothing. Sal, he like raises his glasses. So I look at the so the Jack dude, right? I'm like, you don't listen to to my show. He's like, no, no, I've heard of it. I'm like, well, I I figured you would, bro. You look like you. So we started talking about working out. Yeah. Then I'm talking about kids with the guys and back and forth. And then he takes my license back, check, and then he comes back. I'm like, are you guys married? And I'm like, no, man, we're not married. Dude. I don't want to get married. And I don't want to have kids. And I'm like, you know, you got to have kids. It's the greatest thing. I said, but they're losing their shit. You don't even know. So then I FaceTime my wife <laughs> while I was talking to them. Yeah. And I and Jessica is on the other line. And she's like, I got to get back to the kids right now. You can't be on. The, and then I hang up. So they heard her like do that yeah. thing. So the guy's like, you get back to your wife, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm, like, bro, I'm like, you guys don't have to let me off. You could totally give me a ticket. They're like, nah, go. Just next time, don't do that or whatever. I'm like, thank you, God, bro. So, <laughs> it, hopefully, they're listening now. <laughs> yeah. yeah Coolest guys ever. You didn't have to let me off. You totally couldn't give me a ticket because uh, I, I totally broke dude. the law. But, but I, thought I, that, I saw the Jack guy. I'm like, for sure. Yeah. No, don't listen. I'm with Doug. <laughs> it's, it's such a constant rem, uh, like reminder of like, uh, you know, how much – more potential of growth the show has is like yeah. when we i think it's crazy when we go he says he's heard of us though but yeah i feel like if you work out like really consistently yeah. you probably have because you've probably come across a, a tiktok clip or like yeah, a, yeah. i mean the amount of views is in the billions when you count all the platforms so like that yeah. so the likelihood if you're hardcore fitness you may have came across it there's obviously a, a large chance you do, have never listened to the show but most people that I see that are like that fit have like somewhat heard of it at yeah. least. Right. But, but I mean, still, you know, you know, it's like, it trips me out. I can go in these gyms sometimes. And I mean, especially this fitness 19 that I've been going to, I mean, it's like this whole generation of like young lifters and ain't nobody know who the hell we are. You know? Is it like a dog's pooping outside deadlift? Form, oh, or is dude. It, uh, <laughs> it's, hey, so what are we working with? So, okay, so the first, the first, the first two days, okay, I've lifted there now, like I think, I don't know, maybe like six, five or six times now, maybe more now, somewhere around there. The first two days, I, the, the, I haven't been in a commercial gym ever for like almost three, three and a half years yeah. or so. Right. So the trainer in me comes out. I can't help it. I see like two, two young high school guys coaching each other. Yeah. Trying to figure out he's doing a lap pull down. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy just can't figure out. Are you the old guy now that comes out? Oh, I did. I take my headphones off. I say, Hey, you want me? To, but well, you know, it's cool though. The kids were just like, 
like, yeah, yeah, no, they were totally appreciative. No idea who I was and, and showed him how to showed him a little tip. And then he saw the kid like get it right away. And he was like, Whoa, he's like, thank you. I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I've done that the last couple of times. I'm like, okay, I got to stop doing that. Cause I don't want to become like the, the yeah, mayor you're of this be the gym. Guy. Like, yeah. yeah. Then everybody starts asking me and I won't be able to go there. I can't forget my workout. This guy knows what's up. <clears throat> yeah, I don't like to talk to nobody. Oh, uh, like you know, it's hard though for me, especially when I see two, 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 uh, genres of people, uh, young, Young boys trying to figure out young kids, right? Young and kids, elderly, yeah. try or elderly, right? Those two, elderly, I, I will. I have and and if yeah. they're in my right in my vicinity, and it's like okay, I, I got like a little yeah, thing. I feel the same. Then I then I feel this like let me give you a little a little tip on that to help you out. I by no means am I cruising the floor yeah. looking for people to, to help. No, there's this one woman that I I there's, she's she's this old Asian woman. She's probably seventy something, so like that old. <laughs> And she literally works out in like black slacks and like a grandma sweater. So she works out. <laughs> but every time yeah. she, and, and this has happened like 10 times, she'll catch eyes with me while I'm working out. And she gives me this smile and this nod. Very sweet woman. Very, very sweet woman. So I saw her doing something. I helped her out the other day and she gave me a little high five. Thank you. So now every time I see her, she's so cute. She's a, I wanted to give her a hug, but then I'd be like, eh. She'd be like, are you, you, so are you consistently, cause I'm, I'm bouncing around now to several not gyms. One gym. You're at the, the same one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't graduated from that, huh? That what, gym is good for me. Well, cause I feel like it, because it's full of uh, older ladies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. That's perfect. It's like perfect. it calms me down. Where you're the strongest person always. <laughs> That's it, dude. Yeah. I'm going to be the, you're the, always the be strongest the hero. person. Jack this guy. Yeah, you're all, oh, oh, I like, so the old ladies come up, feel your biceps. Yeah, yeah. you're the most Jack guy and you're the strongest. So I, I like, I like going to that gym too, but it's normally on my way up. Yeah. And then I start feeling myself. I'm like, okay, I need to be humbled. Let me go to the Golds or let me go to the American Barbell no. where I just, I, I, I don't want to work out. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't I just want to just do my thing. Thing and just I haven't it. branched out yet. I haven't even been to the commercial spots. How since long is it? the freaking pandemic? I haven't even been. You haven't at all. Nah. You know, you ought to do it. It's it's been an interesting. Well, I've been thinking about it. It's yeah. been an interesting experiment. Justin for me. doesn't like bodybuilder gyms. That's why. Well, like as soon as he sees bodybuilders, he wants yeah. But to, he can go to like a, where I'll go like train American Power Barbell. Fitness or yeah, American Barbell. Oh, or like go. I dude, I mean, I was all into Gold's gyms and um, so it was more of the ones of the serious guys, not yeah. like the. Um, the commercial like twenty four mm -hmm. and the you know the people yeah. that like think they're bodybuilders and they're just douchebags. You know? <laughs> That's different. Uh, no, the actual ones that are like cool. But uh, yeah, no. So I I was thinking about going back to Santa Cruz Power just because I like the the vibe there and everything, and they still have like platforms and uh, there's people doing uh, powerlifting on top of bodybuilding. So, you know, truth to be told, I I think I would prefer to not work out. Uh, in a gym with that many like really serious people because it might if I think I'm trying to put myself there mentally it might trigger my ego it might make me want to add weight to the bar and do shit that's probably not not good mm. yeah I, I feel like I've me I, personally yeah you know? no I feel like I've I've been so devoid of of even being around anybody for so long I, there's no ego dude like I honestly feel like I could ramp it up a little bit like, <laughs> I just don't give a shit at all. Like it's. Like I mean, that's kind of how I feel, Justin. That's yeah. why the the being in that kind of environment has been good for me. Is I think the the biggest thing, my biggest takeaway right now of the difference in my training in the last, let's say, couple months now compared to the previous three years. Because don't get me wrong, I, I I enjoyed the training at home and training in here for the last three years. You guys converted me, I'd say, over to to that. The the things that I'm enjoying or the perks I see now to be in the commercial gym. Is it because I have to drive there? If like, say what happened, I tell you guys before in the past, like at home, like there's times where I'd say, Hey, you know what? I'm just going to go and get squats. And sometimes that's all I would do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, which was awesome. Cause I was like, Hey, that's better than not doing anything or talking myself out of going to the gym. Yeah. Where now I still have that same conversation, like ah, I'm not really feeling it today. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go do this. But you already drove there. But I already yeah. drove there, and it's like you know the the effort to park, to get out of the car, to walk in, to do all that stuff like that. It's like, am I really just gonna go five minutes and then walk out? Like, <laughs> no, I'm gonna maybe I'll do one more. It's easier to talk myself into more intensity, more volume, and I think I need that right now. I I'm I've been on the other end of like maintaining my 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 health, strength, physique, mobility. For the last three years, like I'm on this kick right now of like trying to make moves, and in order to make moves, it's helped me 
be more motivated. So how many gyms yeah. are you going to? You got so I have 24, fitness 19, fitness 19, 24, 24 uh, American uh, Barbell. American Barbell. Those three. Yeah. And, and then, then of here, course, if here and, and here at home. I you saw, know, dude, I saw this video that um, I for sure want to replicate. And, and there's people send me videos all the time, people doing funny things and skits and gyms and whatever and whatnot. But this one was like sent from my friend who actually played in a band with. He was like our drummer. And he's like, dude, we need to do this. And it's these guys, they put together like this metal band and they were behind um, these guys working out. Like they just went into a commercial gym and started playing when the guy was about to do like a PR attempt. And they're like, <laughs> like playing metal and stuff for him to, to like <laughs> I was like, dude, that would be so epic. Like <laughs> you're about to like lift your heaviest lift and, and then you have your own band there just like hyping you, you up. You know what? The most complaints I ever got running gyms would be close out. I would always have a DJ spinning live music right. in the gym. Did you ever bring a real band or just like a DJ? Never a, brought, actually, no. A mariachi band. Oh, crap. I did the same thing. <laughs> we used to, uh, Capital McKee, every close out. We I, did, a I, brought, I brought a mariachi band yeah, in once yeah, too. Yeah, dude, did you guys get Well, complaints? I'm probably crushing that area, yeah. We did, but we had a lot of people that loved it because it was East Side San Jose, you know? So just, Jay yeah, Subia yeah. hooked that up all the time. You know what I'm saying? That's so hilarious. No, I had, a, I had a guy spinning live music and it always sold more memberships, but the members hated it because I had big of ass speakers. Of course. Whatever yeah. equipment was near the speakers, you were going to get your ears blown out uh, yeah you know but we would do <laughs> but you know but back to the the chp thing when's the last time you got pulled over by chp and they didn't give you a they don't do that um they'll pull your ass over that's their job is to give you a ticket like i made friends with a guy it was like he was played rugby and i was like at, at the time i was like on my way to a game and i was like speeding like crazy and so i use that because I was like wearing my uniform and stuff, mm. and we kind of, sh you know, but that was it. I yeah. never, Normally, I get a ticket immediately. I got, yeah. I got nailed. The last CHP got me, got me like two years ago, and I was in the, it was in my white car heading back from the, I was in the country out in the middle of nowhere, but I was mad. I was like doing a hundred. I think he got me at like ninety yeah. something. Yeah, and he, you and look he suspect, let me go. Though. He let me go. Yeah. What? Yeah, I think because wow. I had Katrina in the car. Uh, you know what I'm saying he's like, well, he can't yeah. be that bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we look. Yeah, we look. I don't, and I don't know yeah. why we didn't have. Like, he's trying to press hundred with Max. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, he was he was just cool. I don't think I think he, he was cool. He was in a, a block and I didn't have to make up some crazy. So I didn't say, oh, we're in a hurry, this or that. I honestly said, man, honestly, I didn't even look down at the speedometer. I said, this thing just rides so smooth. We're out in the middle of nowhere. I didn't see any cars. I said, didn't realize it got up to that. So I think if you're honest, you probably have a better chance. Of I used course, to, I used to oh, yeah, the whole I'm, thing when I'm I was a kid. Where I'd be like, oh, I mean, I don't you? know why, officer. Wouldn't you? Know? you? Uh, wouldn't yeah. you? I mean, if I was a cop and yeah. you're just straight up like, oh man, my bad, bro, you got me, or just just admit I got it. hammered when I was a kid because I lied because yeah. I did a burnout <laughs> and then I got pulled over and the cops like, do you know why I pulled and acted stupid? Like, no, I don't know why. <laughs> and I think he wanted to like teach me a lesson because I was a young kid. Yeah. So he's like the whole scared straight thing. So he freaked, get out of the car. And he like put me up on the hood. <laughs> Swear to God, dude. Spread no, those cheeks. No burnouts. <laughs> yes, spread your hey, cheeks. didn't go that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Where you hiding? Don't ever do a burnout again. <laughs> Where you hiding your license? I ain't oh. keistering anything, God, I swear. <laughs> no, 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 no. Put me on the hood. He put my hands behind my back, handcuffed me. My cousin was this in the car. This is why he's all into weird stuff. You know? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's it. Now we know where it stems from. It was that imprint right <laughs> there. Left the right uh, imprint. I was the mark, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Teenage years. <laughs> you're already probably thinking about You're on your way to go beat off, I'm sure, at 16, uh, 17 years old. That's uh, always. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. Where are you going right now? Always, yeah. always bringing them handcuffs on their yeah. trips. Hey, honey, before, before I climax, can you push me down the hood of the car? <laughs> Real hard. <laughs> oh, no, that's not what happened. Okay. That's not what happened. Anyway, those guys are great. So shout out to those guys. Shout out for letting you go. I wasn't yeah. turned on, but oh, thank you very much. That's cool that you got out of it. That's a, I did. That's dude. awesome. Did. You're right. That doesn't happen that often. Yeah. You know, I think too. I think that's. And then it's funny. I came home. You know, it's funny. And I come home, and my my young my toddler who was like losing his mind. He was so cute. He was standing, uh, you know, uh, on the porch. Or whatever, just real nice with his hand in his little pajamas, or whatever. Just stand there because Jessica's like, go wait outside for your dad. He's just standing there waiting for me, and I get out, and he's like, "Hi, Papa," all sweet. I'm like, yeah. oh, you would never know this kid was just throwing you. Shit out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Twenty minutes ago, you know Katrina I mean? says she know, we're gonna try this uh, this trip. Um, we're we're it, uh, obviously it's a little early to like teach him like really calendars and days, but she notices when I'm if I'm gone beyond two days. He starts to get like irritable and he's constantly asking, Where's daddy? Where's daddy? Aww. Where's daddy? And so this trip coming up where we're gone for more than that, she's gonna try and like, okay, like get the calendar out and be like, Okay, this is today. 
daddy leaves this day. This is when daddy returns and then like X the days off. So we can kind of somewhat teach him like the, 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 like the idea of time and days and stuff like that. So. Yeah. So the, so, um, this course I've been taking this, um, good inside course, Dr. <laughs> Becky, she's incredible. She talks about telling, uh, stories to your kids and, um, you can do it through play. Uh, like, like, you know, he's got like dinosaurs and, Oh, daddy, dinosaur is going to go on a trip, but he'll be back. And then you, you know, you walk through the emotions. He's sad. Mm -hmm. You know, he really misses daddy, but daddy always comes back. Or mm -hmm. here's your son's old enough. You could just tell them, yep. you could tell him, Hey, next week and do it way in advance. Mm -hmm. Hey, next week, I'm going to be out of town for, th you know, four days. And then you show him on the calendar and then you tell him again, two days later. And then the day before, okay, I'm going to be gone. But when I get back and it actually makes a big difference to do stuff like that. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'll, I'll report back because that's exactly what Katrina and I are doing on, on this trip coming up is already starting to plant the seed with him now. And so, because she's already started to piece that together. One night, yep. two nights I'm gone, not a big deal, stuff like that. He's normally having fun doing his thing. And then by the second night or the third night or third day, he's already like, where's daddy? Where's daddy? Where's daddy? So we did we did a blood test for um, <clears throat> for food intolerances. We're going to do a blood test for Aurelius. And I did this. I, te I actually tested it. I did it with his stuffed animals like four days before. Then I talked about it the mm. day before. Then the lady showed up and he was like, I mean, he, you could tell he's still scared. They're going to put a needle in his arm. But he was like, because I walked him through exactly what's going to happen. Then we're going to put on the Kindle. Then you're going to watch this. Mm. I'm going to hold you down. And I have to hold your arm tightly <clears throat> so you don't move. And he was like, prepared. It totally worked. It's the weird, it's the crazy Did you thing. see, there? that's funny you bring that up. There was a viral video that's going around that I just saw in the last few days of a, like, and it's like, it's like a TikTok and it's like the best doctor in the world. And it's the doctor giving a, a kid a shot. Mm. And it's like a kid, like our kids age or younger. And his, he just so smart the way he, he, he plays with like the, the needle covered and then pretends like he, he's pokes him and he laughs and giggles and he slides back and then he brings it again and he keeps touching the, the kid with the the needle protect, protected oh, so he realizes wow. like him coming towards him and doing that it doesn't hurt or whatever and, and he and then he like distracts him real Perfect. quick and just thoop, sinks so it the, in and then, it's really the anticipation yeah 100 percent it's that it's this anticipation of this this thing stranger coming Stressful at you with this part, needle yeah. and he did this he showed this doctor like setting it up i'm like oh my god like that's like an amazing doctor. so well, much I, of it psychological there's you know I, I i know people i know adults that pass out from getting their blood yeah, I, I, I met some of the bro, biggest dudes I know that are like that. They're they just can't like, even, oh, they you know, that's oh. my least, that's my least, like, I stress out about that. I do not like, my, <laughs> really? I don't like my blood like, taking. Wait, bro. like, really stress yeah. out? Yeah, well, not like really. I'm not, I'm not a stress cadet like you. I don't are. like it. Me, oh, my, my, my level of stress, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're just hyper at me. <laughs> You're like, like yeah. we're talking about like, you right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm admitting I stress out about it, not that level of stress out. You're like crazy stress out. Next level. I just don't, I can't, I don't like looking at it. And it is, it's, and it's like hit like it's crazy. Yeah, you can't look at it. You gotta look at it. Yeah, away. and I just it makes fine. it makes me feel lightheaded. I feel lightheaded mm, from it. Yeah. You know, no matter what I've done for food, water, I've done all the stuff. You know, fast, it doesn't matter. Did like, you have a bad experience when you were a kid or something? Not that I know of. I don't have a. I don't recall a memory. Although I, I uh, it's like hit or miss. Maybe yeah. one in four like left it in there too long. Hit no, hit me bad where you get like the the bruise and everything like that. Because uh, uh, I've had that. Yeah, yeah, and that fucking hurts. And they, they've missed it a few times. Yeah. Like, dude, I have such obvious. Uh, that's veins. All I mean, how I'm you miss like, it? I'm a fucking roadmap. Yeah, you can't get you can't get it in there. So it's yeah. Some I, people are terrible at it. But I, that's my. What if you get a toy afterwards or a sticker? You maybe, feel yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe, toys, they toys me, maybe they gave me a lollipop. Dude, out. I I, I gotta I confess, like I I do feel guilty about this. Um uh so everett uh poor guy he's just riddled with like poison oak like all right uh, now like the worst like i i remember i don't know if you guys have ever had yeah, like I a had really it. really bad yeah. i've never had it believe, hopefully dude not. like i forgot i had it real bad when i was a kid and then after that it was i never had it again really pretty much like had it so bad i got immune to it after that but um so like i'm starting to kind of trace back i'm like okay wait so this is like when we started seeing signs of the rash and now it's getting worse and um it was literally when we had our easter egg hunt and i was like out there just like you know throwing, throwing eggs, throwing eggs. Like, <laughs> no he's not gonna get this one <laughs> you know like throwing it way out there in my backyard threw it like in poison in, yeah dude, right in this patch of poison oak <laughs> <laughs> Wow. He got some jumpy. Completely like, 
Oh, that set him up for <laughs> like, yeah yeah jesus rose again <laughs> also your skin you know oh yeah, sorry God. about is that is it everywhere I, I mean it's like it, patchy on his arms but like really it's his legs are like bubbled out you know aren't you like supposed blistered. to do like a oatmeal bath yeah or, or oatmeal or bath calamine yeah calamine, calamine all that but th there's actually like some decent products now that are like and it, it doesn't sound like it because it said like homeopathic medicine and i'm like oh god yeah you know like just the title of that because i grew up my mom was like very homeopathic everything and yeah. i'm like no this doesn't work uh, <laughs> Give me the it's drugs. all sugar yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just like, <laughs> but stop rubbing your apparently their, my their ointment ivy. stuff is legit <laughs> and so this was like expensive it was like 70 dollar like stuff and um tried it out and it was Definitely taking it down quite a bit, but we still had I had to take my doctor. You know, it, it's okay. So uh, you know, I've heard of crazy stories where people like will eat it to make sure they don't get it or something like after that. And once like you, in low amounts, yeah, to kind of you would think really? there, yeah, get a hormetic effect. Yeah, you would that, think yeah, there would be some that. sort of a pill or something that Dude. you could take if you live in an area that has that. And that way you can your suit your system can get uh, adjusted to it or I've never heard it. anybody do that, but I heard like the, the theory of it kind of makes sense. But I it's... have bro, I have an uncle. This is a true story. Now this this is my grandfather's generation. I have to say that because if I tell the story, you guys are like, what was wrong? So my grandfather's generation, and these guys, these are all like they came from Sicily and they were poor Sicilians. Okay. When I mean say poor, I mean literally, I've told you guys this before. Like my grandfather lived in a cement square with you know nine siblings the donkey and his parents like they all stayed in the same room. this is this the is donkey really in there the donkey. in in there when it was too cold so the donkey crazy. had to be in that yeah they, they, they were poor poor right yeah, that's like out of a movie yeah like yeah. poor poor to where you, you know he wore hella big shoes until they fit and then they became sandals when they didn't fit anymore so that's how poor <laughs> they were because his mom would cut the toe off anyway my uncle came here and he's from that generation my grandfather's and they were up in the hills or something doing work, working. I don't remember what they were doing. I think they were doing, you know, tending someone's land or something. And look, old school Sicilians, when they would go work in the mountains or in the hills, there's no bathroom. There's no outhouse. You, you, just, go, you just go to the bathroom and there's no toilet paper. You use leaves. You use plants to wipe your butt. Oh, God. Oh God. You use poison I, oak. I, I know where this no, is going. Yeah. Oh, I swear no. to God. Oh. He wiped himself with poison oak oh. and got poison oak. Up and all up and down his Ooh, his, his butt woo. crack. Yeah. Woo. yeah. Oh my god. That makes god. me itchy right now. That's, yeah. like, that's a true that's a true story. I, right there. So wow. yeah, I know. Poor guy. Just imagine <laughs> <laughs> that's all. I don't wish that on anybody. I've oh. seen the crashes. Oh, yeah, that's hey, are you uh are you following all the the stuff on our, our show all in on the chat GPT oh, stuff? Oh wow. It's pretty wild, right? You know what's crazy about it? Um is and he's in the right that the advancements that we've seen in technology, like the iPhone one came out and then iPhone two took what, two years later yeah, or a year out, or two, a year yeah. or two like that. These are mind blowing advancements that are coming out like weeks later. Like they have something called auto GPT, which is a GPT AI that asks other AIs for help. And they work with each other and prompt each other to find uh, solutions. So these guys, remember, the guys on that show, these are like tech moguls. AI improving AI. Yeah, these are tech moguls. Great. These guys are like, they're, they're brilliant at what they do. They're Silicon Valley uh, giants, right? <clears throat> they were saying that th these, these uh, AI, you know, chat GPT type things are going to replace startups. Startups. Like, like, like your whole staff, 100 people. Well, that's right. Code and all the gone. Dude, like you said, it's it's so fast. It's like it, you can't even really comprehend. No, where we're gonna be. No, it's crazy. No, I, I keep trying to. T I've been uh, telling family and friends, and just to. And the I, the key is this: like, I don't have this, um, you know, scarcity mindset where it's like, oh, don't let it happen, or you know, avoid it at all costs because it's gonna take over our jobs, and you're not gonna have a job. It's more like. You know, this um, it's it's very similar to the internet, just unbelievably more disruptive and faster. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, don't be the person who, when the internet was coming on board, going like, "Oh, we're never going to do that. We're never going to buy things online." Oh, we're like, don't be that person and go like, instead, going, you know, how is this going to be integrated into my current profession, and how can I learn about it and potentially adopt it or utilize it to improve or enhance my own skill sets? Well, what they so were so nobody listened to the uh, the halt then is no, what you're saying no and and you how are they going to regulate this yeah well that it's too late they, they put it out there it was like hey everybody pull the, put the brakes on 
And, you know, Bro, of course there was the companies talking like, about, yeah, right. Listen, there's right now, right now, okay? This isn't like, oh, this is what's going to happen in the future. <clears throat> they have these these AI engines that you that will convert your text into animation. So I could write a story wow. and it and it now How I'm cool watching is that? now I'm watching it. And they're like, "Oh, within a few years, a uh, director is going to be able to go in and create a motion picture through text." Well, and you that- can say in there, "Oh, you know what? Make this character a little bit more this way or make sure that the UFOs land and you're going to just create a just movie. the notes well, then manifest. Isn't that, isn't reality. that, that's how we use to do the newsletter one right now, right, Justin? Like, I don't know if that you're- For the images, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it literally reads what Darren had wrote, that, that page. And spits out of And yeah. then it creates an image based around it. And it's so far, I don't think we've edited or have messed with it. It's been no, all spot on. No, there's been a few uh, we've switched out, but like, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a cool feature because it's like it, it. You can look at it and you're like, oh, I could see how that kind of interpreted and added those, you know, keywords in there. Like you could find it. It's weird. And so, do you know? Are are you actually prompting it, or is it still? Uh, what's his yeah, face? Yes, Jesse still. Jesse still prompting, prompting it. it. And then I because it'd be interesting it. if if you did what Sal just said, which is like you get it and you go like, oh, I like that, but like, could you make it more like this? Yeah, or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah well, and there's different styles too. If you can do different styles based off of like the artist or based off of that you like or whatever. Yeah, like what kind of like mood you want to put out. You know? Yeah, you guys see the one that's going around right now. I saw, I thought Andrew sent maybe the one. Did you send me the, the Drake and Kanye one? Mm-hmm. Or, oh, there's like a Drake and Kanye. They're now Someone taking. Someone wrote a song and it just. Is, yeah, did it in their the AI did style. it. The AI said, you know, write a <laughs> write a Drake and Kanye song or something, and and like sounds like them. Like it's it's and it's Bro. not half bad, dude. It's like, and this is early organic human <clears throat> produced. That's gonna be a, it, it a label. Has to be a thing. How? I, but it's gonna be a label, bro. Like when you go to the grocery store and you see those big ass, perfect looking strawberries, you're like, that's not organic. My, so my, <laughs> I want to get them ugly ones. My brother in law, we were actually made. texting about this last night, and he says, so he, his son, my nephew, is in high school, and he's got him listening to all these uh, AI generated pages. That they, like these kids are already following music that is being created by that and they're what they're doing is they're doing exactly that they're take they're ripping from yeah. a kanye or a drake or like that and then sure, the ai exists and then the ai is creating what i'm wondering is how that how are they going to stop this and then what happens to the person like kanye who had all the had all these rights well, and it's really just accelerating what we do anyways like a, like in terms of like if you're an artist like you're inspired and your muse is comes from all these different backgrounds of how you grew up and what kind of you know impact they had but like you're trying to replicate that and you're kind of coming up with something that's sort of a hybrid and so this is just like just completely adding gasoline the to part, yeah the part that's forget all the armageddon like crazy stuff this is the part that makes me nervous is that it's uh improving and changing faster and faster at a silly ridiculous rate that we can, how do you prepare for that like, how do you say to yourself, let's We're say you're a kid. obviously not. I mean, look, look at the world right now. <laughs> look, yeah, well, I mean, look. It's fucking crazy. Let's say you're a kid going to school right now, and you're, and you're like, I'm going to do computer science. And they're, and they're like, oh, in, in a year, uh, AI is going to do all the coding, and computer science will be gone. You would never think that, right? Yeah. How would you prepare? Uh, well, I think- What I, work am I going to do? I mean, I think, this, I think that's going to be a class before you know it. I mean, they already have classes. Yeah, but by the time you're done with the class- Literally, you'll didn't be done with say, the class, it'll be obsolete. Didn't they say, like, if you have a, a doctorate or PhD in, in AI, that it's already, like, a, like a, a million-dollar, like, salary waiting for you yeah. right now? Right, right now. Right now. Yeah, right, right so, now. Okay, so I, where you're, what you're saying is, I don't think that's necessary. I think we, I st- and I think Sack said this on, on that show, I think we're decades away from complete startups being obsolete or like staffs being completely obsolete we're still the, the the transition is going to be how people integrate it into their the current way of doing things and so i think for the next decade if you learn how to utilize these tools you're going to 10x your value and I and I think that you got a good run for a while yeah. before that, and then hopefully if you're you gotta that, grab it as quick as you can right now. Yeah, and then I think if you're that ingrained in that for the next decade, you're also going to be the one who sees it first when it's transitioning away from that, right, or evolving beyond yeah, but th- that. Okay, fine, a decade. That sounds like such a long time. No, it's no, not. Go <laughs> back, go back in time, ten years from now. Yeah, I know. I get Today it. Today is different, but yeah. is it so radically different from ten years ago that you wouldn't be recognized? Right? No. 
No. Like you, you could go back in time, forward in time to today, and people are like, wow, that's cool, that's cool. But it wouldn't be like, where am I? That's how fast this is progressing well, to the well, point where we, we the had digital space. So if you compare digital versus like the physical like environment, like uh, that, I think the digital space is going to look like nothing we've seen before. I don't know, man. It's just it's weird because Chat GPT one came out when. Yeah, not that long. Yeah, now they have Auto GPT. It was like months. Yeah, you know, months later. But like ten years from now, dude. You know, like at the, <laughs> this rate, yeah. that's why I'm like, ah, yeah, dude. So I, I think, anxiety. I do think it will simultaneously build even more value for human connection though. Uh, do I necessarily mean there's going to be more of that? No, but I do think it'll build more value. What do you in mean? That. Like there'll be a oh, more desire, make it more desirable. Oh, because it'll be more scarce. Yeah, like more. for example, like I mean, there's nothing that like stops rare. like this the, in in the next five years the ability for someone to create this exact show, right? The dynamic off of our personalities, AI generated versions of us, everything pumping out. But then I saw those pictures that you uh, uh, texted us. Oh, my, that was my 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 cousin created that prompted something and it just did some crazy stuff. We were like buffer and cooler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> immediately I was yeah. like, I don't oh, like mine. Though. AI, yeah. like AI me is weird. You guys better. look cool. Mine look I didn't think cool. I, I didn't think mine looked cool at all. I didn't think mine looked like my, me very much. But anyways, anyway. so I, like what we just did with NCI, right? Okay, the the impact that we've had on people's personal lives, the desire for them to fly there and to, to meet us and to share that and for us to connect and talk to them in person and have drinks with people and uh, that, that sense of community and the, the endorphin rush that you get from being that being in person with people. I think that as we go more and more digital and more and more AI, yeah. that that will be a hotter commodity because it'll be more and more rare. It's like romantic. Yeah. And, you know, cause it's, it's not necessary anymore, but it's like, people will look fondly back at like it, it, it person to person interactions and like those type of like events. But I don't, I, I, it's just going to be so different. It'll be like, remember, do you get, remember the movie, uh, demolition man? Uh, with yeah, Sylvester yeah, yeah, Stallone, yeah, yeah. Raising the Future, yeah. or whatever. Uh -huh. And uh, then, then remember when he had sex with uh, Sandra Bullock? The, she, the, the way they had sex in the oh, future. Oh, it was like this. Yeah, yeah, they, they hooked up like their helmets or whatever. Sensory. They never touched each other. Yeah, and he's like, no, we're going to do this like the old fashioned. He's like, you mean we're going to have like, like, yeah, really, like fluid stuff on us? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you had to like talk her into it. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like that. Yeah. You shook someone's hand. You yeah. touched it. Oh, oh, God. You know how many germs are going to be on there? You're like a Neanderthal. Oh, disgusting. I don't know. I think that. Uh, we've already there's enough you know this too because you're the study guy there's enough studies already to show the importance of human connection we've seen those there's lots of studies that show a lot of stuff i mean people do it bro you all know and that, i'm not and i don't disagree you're going to see a lot of people go in that direction i, I think that we see there you're right there's a lot of studies that show that you shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that and, and people still do anyways but i think at the same time that that it will also make that in-person mm -hmm. connection thing uh, as valuable or more valuable. It'll mm -hmm. because it'll become more rare. Mm -hmm. It'll become more rare, just like anything else that's in this world that's rare. It's 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 more sought after. It's more expensive. Speaking of speaking of studies, uh, there was somebody that I don't know if we had them on the show. They messaged me. They might have been on the show, or I might have messaged them in our Instagram. Somebody who was having issues with um, sleep and they had a lot of caffeine and we recommended that they lower and then replace the caffeine with the red juice from Organifi. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. The response, it literally solved their problem. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, Completely sweet. solved their problem. They're like, I, I did the red juice. I had a little bit of withdrawal and now I only do the red juice and I have the energy and I feel good and I don't have the, you know, the insomnia or any of those issues like that. My performance has improved. So do you, okay, great do you, feedback. Do you That's attribute great. that? I might have asked you this before, but I, I forgot what you said. If you did, do you attribute that to one specific adaptogen in there or mushroom, or do you think it's a, it, because? No, it's got a combination. I mean, the, the, I think the main drivers are the rhodiola and the cordyceps that are in there, but it's got beet juice and or, or beet root powder in there and some other stuff. That, but I mean, if you're trying to wean yourself off stimulants. Um, that's a great way to do it. A great way to do it because stimulants are hard to come off of. Yeah, cold turkey is uh, it's pretty tough. terrible. Yeah. You're gonna have like a week of headaches, like, and, depression. Yeah, you know, no, I think bad moods. You know, 
I, that was a huge hack for me. Mm -hmm. I love that's exactly what I do. Anytime I scale back on the caffeine, is I just and mm -hmm. I don't feel any withdrawal that way. It's a like a smooth transition for me to, and I just go. You know, if I'm drinking, let's say the the max I'll hit is start getting three, four range of like mm -hmm. you know either energy drinks or coffees. I just replace the, each one with a, a, the red drink, and then it get to where I get all the way down, and it feels like. Makes it, Makes a huge difference. Huge difference. All right, yeah. I'm going to talk about something negative. I saved it towards the end here because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to crap everybody. Get, get, get it off Doug, the chest. Get Doug wants to I'm not trying to crap carve everybody it off, off the out. End. Uh, so have you guys heard, I wrote it down, the bill, it passed the Washington, the state of Washington's house. Um, it SB, passed. SB 5599. Oh, Did you guys hear about this? Tell me, tell I me did hear bit. about this, but you uh, know about it. Uh, yeah, but I want you to go into depth. With what is it? okay? I don't know so, the details. so it's being politicized, which means the information from both sides is not entirely correct. Although I do think this is uh, really going down uh, the wrong path. So here's what the bill. Uh, here's what yeah, the tell bill us says. what it proposes. Yeah, the bill. The, now, people on the right are are tweeting stuff like this, and I'll read to you. Kind of what they what the tweets say because and I know I, I know the right and left do this and annoys the shit out of me, mm -hmm. but here's what the right I'll give you an example of what the right is saying. Last night Washington State passed SB five five nine nine which allows the state to legally take children away from their parents if they don't consent to their child's gen, gender transition surgeries. Whoa, is that okay. real? Is this true? Uh, kinda, kinda. So here's what the actual bill says. Um. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, inf it infuriated yeah, the shit out of me too. That's alarming, but yeah, let's get in the it, details. It, 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 infu it infuriated the shit out of me too. But here's what the bill actually says: If a kid runs away, the state, if they're minors, is required to let the parents know, "Hey, we have your kid," and I think they have like 48 hours to do so. But there are exceptions, like if the if they really think the kid's going to be abused sexually or beaten or it's a dangerous environment in which case then the state tries to protect them okay but there's very specific exemptions they included now the kid running away saying my parents do not approve of my gender transition so um i don't want to go back home and that, that means now that the state doesn't have to tell the parents and the child can go through with hormone or gender transition procedures. So, uh, not quite as crazy as the, as what the, the, you know, that tweet is still crazy though. Still open up a can of worms. Still crazy yeah. though. I think it's so crazy. Here's what I think I'm going to, you know, uh, I got to go off on this a little bit. I think it's insane that I don't know why there's no logic here. A kid can't consent to a tattoo, No, but they can, they can consent to hormones or puberty blockers or surgeries? No. That doesn't make any damn sense to me. There is as a minor. I get if you're an adult, do what you want, but as a child, that's crazy to me. And and they've put this under now it's because they're saying we're trying to protect LGBT youth and all that stuff. And it's like, look, if you're trying to protect them from being abused, that's already there. Mm -hmm. That was already in the law. But if it's just now they've included that, that means technically a kid could say my parents don't approve of me taking testosterone or whatever. And then they're like, we're not going to tell your parents. And that's fine. We'll tell the state. Now you belong to the state, I guess. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. But at what point, I mean, are we considering that? Because, yeah, if, if that's the case and kids have the ability to then decide these major life altering decisions themselves, like they're going to be able to advocate for all other different types of decisions that are adult driven decisions. Like, it, like how do you stop that from going any further? This than is, that? It's, it's insane to me. It's not yeah, because we're the, the parents it's their, it's your job because it's the formative years of development. They, they haven't figured it all out. We're supposed to protect and watch over them. That is our job. Yes. And there's always shitty parents out there. There is there, I, no doubt. Like there's, there's, situations where it's probably toxic and terrible. No, this is, cra it's, uh, it's crazy to me. I don't get like a kid can't go get a car loan. A kid can't, uh, back in the day, we used to rent movies at Blockbuster. If you were a minor, you couldn't go rent movies. Uh, they can't get a credit card. They can't get a tattoo. They can't drink. They can't smoke, Yep. but they can say, uh, Hey, I, I feel like I'm, I don't want a PNC anymore. Uh, yeah. Or, uh, put me on hormones, which have profound 
psychological effects. For anybody who doesn't believe that, you're an idiot. They have profe- like like if a man's testosterone is too low well, or estrogen's too high or a woman's hormones okay, are off, what's, she feels it. You're gonna do this to a kid. What's the without protocol? Their parents? What's the protocol then for having therapy? Like in terms of like you know any kind of medical procedure like that, like. Is there a is there a period where they have to go through counseling? Used like, to be right. Like what? What they does that look like, and why would that be removed? It used to be, to my knowledge, that if a child, uh, a kid, felt this way, that they had to really go through lots of therapy, really right, uh, work with doctors. But now it's it's now affirming. Where if the kid says it, then the assumption is we believe you, and then that's the next. Then the, then we take the steps from there. It used to be, oh, you feel this way. Let's talk about it. Let's figure this out. See what's going on or whatever. Which to me, it looks like a huge skip of, of steps yes. in terms of them really understanding the, the magnitude of that decision. No, this is, it's, it's, this is absolutely insane to me. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about stuff like this anymore. I think that when I hear shit like that, that I think probably in the past would probably get me all fired up and enraged. I just think of what I hear is just the pressure uh, as a father to really make sure that I'm communicating uh, with my, my son and the pressure of not allowing the school system and the government to uh, plant seeds without me having those conversations with him beforehand or immediately thereafter, because the, the pressure for a parent to, uh, to not fall asleep at the wheel is, is going to be, because if you don't, raise them on, on every aspect of life than the school or the government will. And if you don't align with a lot of the values that these schools are teaching and the government is presenting, then I better be on my fucking a game to be ahead of all this stuff because, you know, getting upset and trying to fight it. And like, I feel like that's a losing battle, right? Like I, I think it's, I don't know. I feel like the, the, I feel like, like your kid could go to a drug dealer um, and you expect a drug dealer to be a piece of shit and sell your kid drugs. Mm-hmm. You don't expect that to come from an authority, a doctor, or their teacher. You know, I mean, like, I, what if the teacher I, I mean, was I, like, "Your I, kids." I, I agree with you, Sal. We just had we just had a live Q and A, and I was appalled by a university professor uh, sharing Netflix game changer documentary to the classroom and telling them that meat gives you cancer. <laughs> yeah. You're a fucking yeah. PhD, yeah, yeah. a college professor, and you're pre- like so that scares me just well, not as even much. In nutrition, yeah. and, and yeah, and you and to your yes, you're supposed to be able to trust the no, and so I look at it. No, I don't. I don't trust any school. I don't trust any teacher. I don't trust any government official to educate my child on damn near anything. Yeah, these are minors, dude. They're not even adults. That's the that's the part that's. Uh, that, yeah. I mean, that's like, the there's, there's cases. There's literal cases of. There was this one uh, mother, she went to the school board, it's filmed, you can find the video, mm-hmm. where her daughter, her, she got, she, something happened, her husband died, then she got diagnosed with, uh, the mom got diagnosed with some disease, so the child was super traumatized. The kid went to the school and said, I feel like I'm a boy. The school put the kid on hormones and never told the mom at all. Yeah. It's Until the mom started noticing, like, what's going insane, on with my daughter? Something different. Insane. So, uh, so, but what we don't know in a, in a situation like that, right? Like, we, okay, first of all, what we do know is that stories like that are used in the media to get the right or the left to rile up and pit fights against each other and get fired up. What we don't know is the relationship that this mom had with this daughter the previous five years of her life. And did she communicate stuff like this? Did they ever talk about this? Did the kid try and Mm -hmm. were they showing signs and she never did? So again, this, when I hear stuff like this, that inside starts to get me all boiled up, what, what it comes down to for me is like, God damn, there is more pressure today on a parent got to be involved you got to be involved you can't just yeah. where where 20 30 40 years ago you could lean on the schools to yeah. hopefully yeah. lay a moral fabric yeah. for your child because it was, it was that's it, gone because All it was trust is gone it it's, was it's more than that i don't care about that honestly i understand that part it's the you're not allowed to give my kid shit without telling me that's yeah. it yeah yeah i don't expect you to raise right. them with morality or expect to raise them like I am. I, you teach them stuff, fine, I get that. Hope, you know, you, you do a good job or whatever. I'll, I'll move my kid's school if you don't, fine. But if my kid does something 
or you give them a medication or a drug or something and then you hide it from me, mm -hmm. that's where I got a problem. Oh, yeah. That's the difference. The difference is you're going to do something my kid without me knowing and then you pair up with my kid like I'm the enemy. Yeah. Oh, hell no. Yeah, I yeah. know. I just don't I don't see that happening to one of us. I I I, I don't think well, that it happens to other people. It's happened well, to other people. I know, but that's I my mean, my point though, Sal, that I'm bringing up but... is that like you only get the the headline story and the written by somebody that has a bias of whatever side they're trying to rile up. And so what missing pieces of that story do you or I do not have, right? Which again could be, you yeah. know, maybe that kid for uh, three years was trying to communicate to their parents and their parents were like, I'm not listening. I'm not having it. No. And they don't even talk about it. Like for all, you know, and that just pushes that child in that direction even further. We don't know that. And I'm not saying that necessarily happened in this situation, but I'm just saying that I recognize that we live in this time now where yeah, everything just, is about just trying to accept it. Everything is mm -hmm. about clicks. Yeah. Everything is about like getting one side riled up against the yeah. other side. And Everybody's I know my influence. My, my, yeah. My, my initial reaction to hearing stories like that is a knee jerk reaction. Like, fuck that. I can't believe that it makes me so angry. But then at the end of the day, it's like these, these types of things are going to keep happening. And it, and it's, if, if, if not at a, an accelerated rate, and so what can I do? Clean my own room, right? That's my, my thought Always. Is, is like, I got to, and I got to just be on the defense uh, uh, from the very jump. Like the fact that the, you know, and, and they're doing stuff at very young ages, these kids, I know, I know kids in kindergarten, first grade, there, there's some, there's some places where there's kids that are there. Like they'll teachers, they'll keep dresses in the classroom and ask if they, Oh, do you want to dress like a girl today or a boy to like asking stuff like that of a young child? It's like that shit. If I find, if I found that other kids not going to that school no more, just I'll, I'll figure out a way to homeschool as well. All the shit that we have on my plate, I'll figure but it it's, out. It would be like, it would be like this. Like, let's say you have a hyperactive kid in class. Okay. You know, any one of us could have one of these. All of us were a bit hyperactive, your kids, whatever. And then you find out they're giving them ADD. They've bullshit. been giving them Ritalin yeah, or I'll, Adderall the whole time and not telling you. But he's getting better grades. He doesn't want to sit still. In yeah, class. but I'll, I'll break that teacher's face yeah, and I'll handle my the repercussions for oh, that. Oh, that's what I wanted to hear. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a, like, I'm you, sorry. If you, really you cross the, the wrong motherfucker in a situation line, like dude. that, someone who is yeah. it, who is communicating yeah. to his son, is talking to him, knows all those things like that. Right. And if your your first that's thing it. is clearly is unacceptable and there has to be those lines that are firm. And that's yeah. just it. Like we we've lost that that stance that people aren't taking the stance. This is the firm line. Like yeah. you got to hold the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you come for the kids, man. That's and and, that, and and so part of me is like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of really quiet. Hey, man, just I just want to do my job. I just want to raise my kids. Moms and dads there's out there. There's a lot of that. Yeah, and they're just sitting there and they're quiet. But there's a lot of this pushing that's starting to happen. And, um, you know, the, the, you gotta put, you know what, the backlash gonna, gotta, is going to be You got to hit them with the pocketbook. That's how it always hurts them. But protesting and going and like getting mad, yelling, that stuff don't work. No. You, you, don't, you know what? You get 50, 100, 200 parents to unenroll their kids from that school. That's yep. how those schools Walk make out. money. Yeah. It's based off of enrollment. Walk My kid out. ain't coming to school no more. Yeah. So let's see yeah. how long this school stays afloat. So you got to hit them like that. You can't, to me, like stand outside and the picket and fucking, or do you guys writing letters or getting all angry? Like that ain't going to do nothing. Yeah. It's like, Hey, the, if there's enough parents that are outraged by that, like I, what I do in that situation is I would inform every parent. They would know like what happened to me. Like, yeah. this is what happened to me. Yeah. You all need to know this is what's going on with this teacher. I'm pulling my kid out of school. Who else? And then oh, you, yeah. you rally them, right? Mm -hmm. Rally them to get him. There and is, then, yeah. And I hit the, we're going such a negative route. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, there's this guy that like was in the valley that uh, everybody was like, no, nah, we're not okay. This guy's a child molester. And we're like, dude. And, no, and they didn't want to put his information out. They didn't want it to be known. Somebody found public and he came back and like, he's, He's a felon, like he's always, and so we took pictures of it, blasted it all over the place, all over town. Put put it up, dude. You can't fucking hide, bro. Yeah, yeah. we know who you are. Yeah, that's just it. Yeah. So I, I got a I got a shout out. Uh, our good buddy uh, Jordan Shallow. So he makes you think about him. I was actually just uh, teasing him the other day because that guy is uh, just a a walking thesaurus, and uh, he he did a great post on something. I remember what it was and. I asked him if I could have some French fries with that word salad. <laughs> he talked shit back to me saying, I'll give you a knuckle sandwich is what I'll give you. Yeah. Uh, but Super smart guy. In incredibly smart. That's some uh, of the best information. He does. And uh, in his like you want high level training certification. His training cert is, is next level. So definitely somebody you should follow if you're not following him on Instagram already. His handle is 
the underscore muscle underscore doc, I believe is what it is. So the muscle doc. Mm -hmm. And I think there's underscores between each word, I think. I'll double check real quick for you, Doug, just to make sure. Yeah, the underscore muscle underscore doc. Hey, what's happening? You've probably heard about cold water therapy. Uh, it does things like reduce inflammation, improve vitality, gives you energy, makes you feel good. Where there's this company called Cold Plunge that makes them specifically for your home with a filter and everything. Fill it with water. It automatically chills the water to the right temperature and keeps it clean. It's got a nice cover on it as well. So when you're ready to use it, pull off the cover, get in, try and stay in there for a couple minutes, hop back out. It's a pretty awesome looking system. And again, it's designed for your home. Go check them out. Go to thecoldplunge.com. The company, by the way, is called Plunge. Uh, and use the code MINDPUMP and get $150 off your purchase. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Matt from Florida. Matt, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. It's good to uh, be back on. Uh, I was on about eight months ago, and you guys gave me power lifts, and I ended up doing pretty well with that. Um, so I appreciate you having me back on because now – I've ran into some problems or I thought I ran into some problems. I was running mass 15 from like January to like now, just cause I'm a college student and just don't have time to go to the gym every single or not every single day, I guess, but like for an hour, four days a week. Um, so I was running that and then I thought I pulled my back. Um, but that was just like, I ended up just getting sick. So it was just like the inflammatory process. But when I sent in the question, I still was thinking about this. I plan on running map symmetry next just because I hear about the benefits and I feel like it would do me very well because I've never done something like that. But I've also been training Nordic curls for the past few weeks and I, I progressed pretty well with them. Um, I can't get all the way down. I just, I do the eccentric only because concentric is pretty impossible. So I don't want to lose that skill while I do symmetry. So I was wondering what you guys thought about that. Oh, okay. Like including it into the program. Yeah. Well, here's a deal. I mean, you could, I guess, add it, but I think you'd be better off following symmetry as it's laid out. Now, what might happen is you might have to reacclimate to the skill of the Nordic curl because it's a, it's a somewhat of a high skill exercise. Although I bet you'd probably come back stronger. So for people that know what a Nordic curl is, it's like a leg curl, except your upper body is what's you're curling up, not your lower body, right? Not your heels, your legs. And <clears throat> it's a tough exercise. There's a lot of resistance. Uh, your upper body's quite heavy in comparison to you know the lower part of your body when you do that exercise. So, uh, but here's the deal: it's bilateral. Both legs are doing the work, and I would venture to say. Uh, with some certainty that one leg is probably stronger than the other. Mm -hmm. So a program, especially if, if you've never done a full program like map symmetry, like have you ever done, you know, two or three months of pure unilateral style training? No, I included like Bulgarians. Um, that was, that's pretty much, I've been doing a lot of dumbbell stuff only. Because I gym at my uh, apartment complex only has dumbbells and machines. So I've just been using dumbbells for the past few months anyways. But now I haven't solely included unilateral, I guess, like symmetry. Yeah. So two dumbbells at the same time is more unilateral than a barbell. But uh, there's, there's ways to get even more unilateral training with dumbbells and, and exercises. Nonetheless... Um, your lower body exercises were probably almost all bilateral, even though you're using dumbbells. So yeah. I, I say follow, especially if you've already been working out for a little while, sounds like you followed some programs. I, yeah. I would say follow symmetry to the T. Um, and then uh, at the end, the last phase is a five by five. So you can kind of test your strength. I think you'll be quite surprised. <laughs> then when you go back to trying the Nordic curls, start slow and see what happens. But oftentimes people find that they're within a week or two of getting used to the exercise, they surpassed where they were before. Yeah. I mean, I, you said you did um, power lift and, and for anybody that's done power lift, I honestly think it should be a requirement to go after that to symmetry, just out of like addressing uh, a lot of that high demand and intensity that, um, you know, you're, you're pursuing and really like generating more force. Now we have to really like go back and assess like where the leakage is of, of, 
um, power and, and uh, energy leaks. So uh, I think it's just it's advantageous because you're going to find that there are uh, just inevitable uh, instabilities that occur or like, uh, you know, imbalances that, that would need to be addressed. So I, I highly recommend that you go through that program because then it, it does address it in the bilateral again in phase four. So it's like you'll see what kind of work, uh, you know, that led up to. Matt, is there a particular reason um, why you don't or why you want to keep the Nordic curls in the program and, and keep doing it, other than just being good at them? Or do you have a specific reason why? Um, I, I mean, I've been following um, Ben Patrick for a little bit, and I hear that Nordic curls are pretty good to protect the knee. And I literally just started doing them. And I just, I bought like one of those straps that you can use around a bench. Like I think I bought it like a month ago. So now, like, I, I really want to start the new program. I just don't want to lose. I don't want to lose the skill and I want to keep doing them because I've seen, been seeing a lot of progress. And I will say that even if I do symmetry, it's not like I'm training the Nordic curls. It's more like I'm practicing them. Like I'm not really going to failure. I'm just doing a few reps for a few sets, um, a few workouts a week, like not self failure or anything until I feel like I can't do like a quality rep. Yeah. But Matt, you, you said you can't do a concentric rep, right? You're just doing a negative. Yeah. Just the negative. Yeah. That's not, that's not a low intensity practice, uh, way of practicing an exercise. Like, like if you want to put an exercise in the category of, you know, this is just something I'm going to add just to practice and it's not going to, yeah. it's not going to impact my recovery too much. It would be something you could perform easily, both concentrically and eccentrically. Yeah, you'd be dragging a sled like Ben Patrick does. Like he, he you know, drags a sled constantly to kind of build up yeah. the back. But also, look, look, here's the deal. When it comes to right to left imbalances, let me ask you a question, okay? Let's say you're doing a bench press and you have uh, one side slightly stronger than the other, which you probably do. Most of us do. Do you notice that when you go light or do you notice it when you go real heavy? Um... Probably heavy, yeah. Yeah, that's when this that's when the bar starts to twist and weird yeah. stuff starts to happen. Okay. Nordic curl is a heavy, hard exercise. Even if you're just doing an eccentric, if it's your right leg that's stronger, that that difference is gonna remain, if not become a little bit worse. So I say, because here's the deal, I you know, you've already been training and working out um, on lots of different types of programs. You did power lift. Go symmetry all the way through, follow to a T, don't add anything. Go back later and then start slow with your Nordic curl. And I bet you'll be surprised. I bet you'll go back and be like, oh, wow, I feel better than I did before. It might take a week or two just to kind of get the hang of it because it is an exercise that requires a little bit of skill. But I bet within a couple of weeks, you'll be like, I didn't, not only did I not lose much, I'm actually better off than I was before. Yeah. And I know, um, just like a follow-up about the actual program, I'll definitely do that. Um, I know that it has like the five by five. Um, but like I said, if I'm in school, um, around the time of the five by five and other programs like three or four months or whatever. So I'm not sure where I'll be at that point. Um, but if the apartment complex doesn't have, uh, barbells, could I still do a five by five? Just, I know that dumbbell deadlifts aren't really suitable, for a five by five, but can I do like other movements like Bulgarians five by five? Sure. Dumbbell bench a five by five. Yeah, you, could, you could also transition to. Um, I mean, why don't we do this? Why don't we, do you have maps and a bulk already or no? No. Because why don't we give him maps and a bulk and he could do the whole dumbbell version of that? So when yeah. it goes, gets to the five by five section, if you don't, we just go phase one maps and then go phase one maps and a bulk because that's and, and there's an at home version there. Mm -hmm. So you can do the all wait. Dumbbell. Hold on a second, Matt. Did we give you a program last time? Power lift. Yeah, you reached your limit. Can't have another one. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Matt. I'm just kidding. We'll give you <laughs> we'll give you maps at a ball if you don't have it. Hey, I saw you guys give someone like three programs in the forum. The other <laughs> oh, that's fucking Sal. Yeah. Sal does that sometimes. Yeah. Like, gets in one of these happy moods. He just starts yeah. giving our, our business away. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. the Oprah. I don't love everybody yeah. the same. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm but if you don't have anabolic, do you have symmetry? I do. Yeah, I bought that. All right, good. So yeah. we'll send you maps and a bulk if you don't have it. I think that's great advice. Adam Adam hit the nail on the head. If at the end you don't have access to barbells, do maps and a bulk, the dumbbell version, mm -hmm. and it's already written out for you. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you, guys. You yeah. got it, brother. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks for calling in. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think uh, that's the thing that people need to understand is the the you, what you said, Justin, beautiful. Because if you're going to, if you have a right to left discrepancy, 
uh, training like a power lifter is going to make that. It's going to it's going to strengthen or the hell out of that. Magnify it. Yeah, because yeah, it's all bilateral barbell work, and you're training with high load. High load is when this stuff happens. Like, think about this. If, if someone's listening right now, think about when you were spotting your friend doing a bench press, and form looks good, form looks good, form looks good, and then they start to now get to those reps. Sets in. Yeah. yeah, and then all of a sudden, the bar starts to twist, and their chest come, you know, turns, and weird stuff starts to happen. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing a high load exercise that you can't even do the positive portion of the rep, you're just doing the, the eccentric, that's probably counter to what we're trying to accomplish with map symmetry, which is to develop, uh, you know, symmetrical strength, control, and stability on both sides, which then translates uh, profoundly to bilateral exercises. So, which is, I think, such yeah. a good point that you made. Like, because we we talk a lot about practicing exercises on the podcast, and there are specific exercises I think that lend themselves well to that type of a deal than ones that don't like yeah. and doing something that is so difficult that you can't even do the positive portion of the rep would not be in that category of ideal if he said something like hey man when i when i do seated row it just makes my posture feel really good all the time and i, I see it's not programmed yeah. in this program can i practice that yeah absolutely cut the load down to you know 30 40 percent and do it every single day if you want if it helps out your, your your posture and you're not getting sore from it but that's an exercise you could easily control right. you could lighten the load and it's it is just a practice and technique thing where something like that like yeah, you have those Nordic curls, you do five reps of those things. <laughs> They're gnarly. They're yeah, intense. you're blasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our next caller is Maxi from Australia. Maxi, what's happening? How can we help you? Yo, how's it going, guys? Um, super stoked uh, to have to have so I should be on the podcast. So um, I've been listening for uh, three, four months now. So kind of a new listener, but making my way back through. So I just wanted to say. Thank you so much for providing such like a powerful resource, man. It's uh, really helped me on uh, my recovery journey. So awesome. thank you. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah. So a little, um, I I'll, I'll, I'll won't take up too much of your time, but um, a little backstory on me. Uh, sorry, man. I just woke up. So <laughs> um, yeah, about a year ago, I fell down like a slippery slope of developing an eating disorder. Pretty tough time. Um, and uh, got got pretty lean, got down to about 45 kilograms, lost all my muscle mass. I didn't really have any. I never strength trained before that. And um, yeah, was hospitalized with a collapsed lung and um, really really spiraled out. It was, it was a pretty tough time. And um, following a natural disaster, which I got caught up in as well, I, I started to abuse uh, alcohol pretty bad. And um, yeah, um, quickly decided to change change gears and and, and uh, make some bit better decisions for my life. So um, I picked up weight training after some doctor's advice and um, I've been training for about a year now and I've, I've put on 20 kilos and restored my weight and um, coupling strength training and, and nutrition has been just like the perfect marriage and, and really helped me recover and um, uh, regain my weight. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's seriously saved my life. So I'm um, really glad to be going down that path. Um, uh, so here's, here's a bit of a curveball. So, um, about six months ago, I got hit with chronic fatigue or a lot of doctors diagnosed me with, with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome or long COVID. And, um, simultaneously I, I've plateaued in the gym and, um, it's, yeah, I've been lean bulking for about six months but um not making any progress and then i was starting to actually regress so um i took a deload week recently but um yeah basically my question for you guys is um having like this kind of stress on your body like this uh chronic fatigue and um possible long covid is that is that like a potential to like really slow down your progress in the gym? Um, obviously that sounds like a silly question, but um, yeah, I would just love your guys' opinion and your advice following that. So 
it's not a silly question. No. I think I think uh, it really can depend. It could depend on um, how stressed you already over are or already are with uh, the lack of potential sleep and energy, and then what your training protocol slash diet looks like. If you're also under eating and over training, and also have this chronic fatigue, then absolutely it's a it's a quick recipe to not only plateau but regress. So I think uh, the idea is to to build a routine and diet that is less focused on building tons of muscle or making these massive gains, but uh, taking care of your body and trying to get to a place where you feel more energy, you sleep better and things like that. So what, what does your training look like right now? Are you following one of our programs? Are you doing your own thing? Tell me a little bit about your training. Uh, yeah, I'm not currently following one of your programs. Um, obviously hearing a lot about them, listening to the show um, and starting to think about it. But um, yeah, about a year ago, I kind of like pieced together my own push pull legs program. Um, it's a 10 day split. So it's, push, pull, legs, um, uh, push, pull, rest, legs, rest, and then repeat. Um, and intensity is quite, intensity is quite high, like two reps from reserve, two reps from failure, but, um, like not a lot of sets. And, um, I'm like starting to like really reduce my volume, like on my legs, day, on my legs day, I only squat now. Um, and, my diet's like pretty dialed in to where I'm like consistently gaining a little bit of weight week to week, um, eating 2,700 to 2,800 calories. Um, so like I am noticing like body composition changes, but like it doesn't really seem to line up with my strength in the gym as it like declines. <laughs> I got more, I got more questions for you, Maxie. If you don't sure. first, first off, congratulations on um, where where you've come from. That's very challenging, and um, that's a win in itself, right? That's a huge win, and um, I I appreciate the bravery, right? You're on a show that's going to be publicized, and you're talking about this. This is great because there's a lot of people out there that uh, you might help by telling this to. So uh, I'm going to ask you some questions. You don't have to answer them if you don't want to, if you don't feel comfortable. But did you yeah, yeah. Did, did you end up figuring out what uh, what it was or or the reason why you developed the eating disorder and the alcohol issues, did you end up figuring that out? Yeah, sure. Um, I knew you were going to ask this question actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I have, you know, I've, I've, I've spoken to therapists and um, I really got down to this like control. Basically it was just like finding control in my life. Um you know, like it was, it was like finding, finding out that like deep cause didn't really seem to, to change much, but it, it certainly, um, uh, yeah, made it much more clear and more simple as to why I didn't need to do that to myself, you know, and, um, why I can, could get better and, and avoid these destructive behaviors, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like I have a much better relationship with food now. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a long journey and it will always still be sitting there at the back of your mind. But, um, yeah, the relationship has improved. That, so that's, com that. that's common. It's, it's common that um, because for people who don't understand control, they're like, what do you mean by control? Oftentimes when people feel uh, out of control, whether in their life now or they grew up in an environment where there, it was unstable or there was a lack of control, then they find something that they can control, which is food. And it gives them that sense uh, of control, right? Or at least that's how the theory was your life at the time. Did, was it that your life at the time felt out of control or was this something that uh, started in childhood and believe, trust me, uh, this yeah. is going somewhere. So. No, no, for sure. Yeah, no, it was, it was certainly environmental, you know, um, this, this really kind of came came under um, a lot of environmental stress and and that was like due to COVID of course and and uh, you know being relocated through cities and um, especially with alcohol it was um, certainly environmental I think 
anybody under the right amount of circum in the right circumstances and under the right amount of stress can be vulnerable to these things. Um, and yeah, you know, you know, COVID was quite the lockdowns here in Australia were, were quite intense. I don't know if you guys heard overseas, oh, yeah. but um, mm -hmm. and um, following that, I did get caught up in a major flood disaster where you know my whole community lost everything. So it was it was certainly environmental stress was yeah. part of it. Okay, yeah. And your and your environment's different now. Let me ask you. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you a question about what's happening right now because because <clears throat> you. What you did is you you went through something really challenging. So correct me if I'm wrong. Really yeah. challenge, really challenging environment, um, and that uh, and you said quite accurately in the right conditions. Uh, I mean, anybody uh, will, will try to find a coping mechanism, and it can be alcohol, drugs, uh, it could be eating disorder, it could be lots of different things. So you're in this really challenging situation. You pulled yourself out of it, and part of the tools that you used to pull yourself out was exercise and eating healthy or properly to, to kind of change your body. Now you're yeah. in a position. So then you went on this period of like gaining muscle, gaining strength and feeling better. This is amazing. This is working. This is amazing. Now you're plateauing. You feel fatigued. By the way, chronic fatigue syndrome tends to be uh, an umbrella term that means we don't know why you're tired. Um, yeah, so right. <laughs> we're just going to label it right. Um, and long COVID seems to be one of those things as well, uh, yeah. to the best of my knowledge. Like we don't know what's going on. Do you feel out of control right now? Uh, no, no, I don't feel out of control. Okay, good. I'm glad you said that because what I don't want is for you to go back, uh, or, or start to uh, develop a relationship with exercise and diet that is also unhealthy. Um, so not doing it can be unhealthy. But doing it to the point where if you're not progressing and you're not seeing these things that maybe pulled you out of something before or gave you these profound changes before, uh, that could push you to doing things that are also uh, destructive. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do before we talk about your workout and what you need to do. I want you to realize yeah. the total values of exercise and nutrition. And part of that value, which is the ones that we tend to um, – attach most of our value to is strength, fat loss, muscle gain, aesthetic. But now you're in a position where that's not happening for some reason. And you're trying to figure out why, um, yeah. with your health, but now you need to use exercise and diet in a way that just makes you feel better. And you need to stop measuring your success in terms of strength and aesthetics, because okay. there's something underlying that we, that you still haven't figured out. So I would go to the gym and I would eat and the things that I would use to dictate whether or not I'm moving in the right direction is, does this make me feel better objectively, physically? Am I, am I sleeping better? Does this give me more energy? Is my digestion better? Is my, is my mood more positive? And if it is, you're on the right track. If it isn't, you're on the right track. I would ignore the weight on the bar completely. I would ignore all the physical, you know, strength and all, you know, fat loss, all that for now, until yeah. we figure out what the root issue is as to why you may be feeling the way you're feeling. Then lastly, yeah. I'll say this, and I don't know what the, I don't know how available this is to you where you're at, but I know here in the States, we have now quite a bit of uh, functional medicine practitioners, which are excellent and will go way further than your typical MD. So an MD will say chronic fatigue syndrome and, yeah. they, and they did your normal blood test. Well, everything looks like normal, but we can't really figure out what's going on. A functional medicine practitioner is going to do test after test after test after test. And they're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper and try and figure out what's going on. So I highly suggest you view exercise and nutrition as a way to right now, just make yourself feel better. That's what your workout's going to look like. That's what your diet's going to look like. If it makes me feel better, do it. If it doesn't, then let's do it in a way that makes me feel better. And then I would contact and work with a functional medicine practitioner and I would tell them exactly what your symptoms are, exactly what the diagnosis is. And if anybody's yeah. going to get to the root cause of why you're feeling this way, it will be a good functional medicine practitioner. Do you, do you know of any in your area around there? Because if not, we can recommend you to some of the ones that we work with. And I do believe they do things virtually as well. Yeah, I, I'd happily look into what you'd recommend, but, um, yeah, I do. Ha I do have a few contacts uh, around. I've been kind of um, 
tiptoeing in. Um, yeah, there's obviously I've been on this like fatigue journey for the past six months. So I've, I've uh, exhausted a lot of my general practitioners uh, surrounding me and um, a lot of, um, yeah, just general medicine. So I have definitely started taking a lane of, I think I need to, and especially listening to you guys, like you seem to um, promote functional medicine. And um, I, I think that's definitely the next kind of, I would, I would take, <laughs> take advantage of our free forum that we have access already. So he has access to Dr. Cabral in there. So he can start in that direction and, and they, yeah. they offer tons. It's of MP holistic health, uh, right? Is that on, on Facebook? Correct. M yeah. MP. It's a free forum. So you can go there and ask questions. And then I, I, I'd like to give you maps anabolic and maps 15. 15. And let me tell you how I would decide what to use. I want to give you both yeah. both programs and to Sal's point of what you're supposed to be gauging. I'm not worried about strength. I'm not worried about six-pack abs. I'm worried about feeling good and and the workout complementing what's going on. So let's say it hasn't been the greatest night of sleep or I feel a little stress with work, whatever stuff's going on. I, I would ask you to pick something from MAPS 15, a workout from that. Let's say you start to string a couple good weeks of great rest, good eating, your energy levels are up, then I would pull from MAPS Anabolic. So right, I, right. it's not a normal thing that I would recommend to someone for like following our programs, but you could do that. And I would tell you to use your best judgment on how you feel on w how you should train. I think Anabolic and 15 would be two two good programs to have at your disposal. Yeah. And, and, and just for, look, I'm, you might know this already, but for anybody listening, functional medicine practitioners are not woo woo. They're not. They use real medical testing. They they the the difference is their their goal entire goal is not to mask symptoms with medications, but rather figure out why the hell you have symptoms in the first place. And there's a few there's a few categories of things that Western medicine does a terrible job working with. One of them is chronic fatigue syndrome. Look it up. Anybody who's experienced with this knows that this is a term that they use when they can't figure out why the hell you feel so tired. So they'll say, you got chronic fatigue syndrome, and that's it. We don't know what the hell's going on. And maybe they'll try an antidepressant. Maybe they'll try throwing other things at you. But there's a reason why you're suddenly have this crushing fatigue. There's a reason. Does that mean we'll be able to figure it out? I don't know. But the best people for that are people who that's what they do, and that's functional medicine practitioners. So 100% go in that direction. Great. Great. That's great advice. Thank you. You got yeah. it. You got it. And we'll send those programs to you. So you have those two to, to pull from. Okay. Yeah. That'd be amazing. I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time and um, thank you so much again. Like you guys, I feel, it sounds crazy, but you know, it feels like you're, just, you're my mates now. Cause I just, uh, you're in the car every day and uh, you're in, at home while I'm cooking dinner and uh, uh, it's real great. It's uh, a great time. Appreciate Thank that. Awesome. We are, we are Maxi. Keep it. Follow up with us too. Let us know how everything's going. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right, brother. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I had a client like this where she went to the doctor, typical blood tests and hormones, and we looked at this and that. She's like, "Oh, I just got, you know, I got chronic fatigue syndrome." <laughs> what? Just the label, and then that was the end. You know, of the you know, irritable bowel syndrome used to be. So I, I, I have gut issues. They used to tell me, "Oh, you just have IBS." Yeah. What the fuck is that? Oh, it's umbrella just, term. For oh, your gut just, you know, whatever. Yeah, could be all. What the thing. hell is it? Oh, yeah. it's IBS. We just call it IBS. Well, you guess what we know now? Now we know that there's SIBO, CFO, leaky gut syndrome. By the way, they laughed at all those stuff and made up, made fun of this Parasites, stuff. Parasites. Yeah. Who were the ones that, that were first looking at those things and identified those Functional things? Medicine. Functional yeah. medicine practitioners. Yeah. So you, if you're walking around with a label. Environmental causes, all kinds of things. If you, if you, if you suddenly feel like something is wrong and they can't figure it out and they label it, labeling it doesn't mean anything. It just means that you got a label now. Go to the root. Try and figure out the root, and you have to be your best advocate. I ironic, too, that they labeled the chronic fatigue syndrome and or long, long COVID, COVID which yeah. has also been debunked already, Well, too. just there's like, there's like, what is it? And, you know, yeah, I, just I, a blanket. Yeah, I just blanket read some term. crazy data on, uh, they, they just released some data showing that, I swear to God, and this is, you know, this is controversial right now, that wearing, um, especially N95 masks all the time, yeah. actually produced in a significant amount of people 
symptoms that could be labeled long COVID. <laughs> so <laughs> who knows? That's just a, this one controversial study that's coming out. So I'm not saying it's, you know, that that's the deal, but who knows? Who knows? Our next caller is Chris from New York. Chris, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys. How are you? Good. 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 Um, first off, yeah, cool. Uh, first off, yeah, thanks again uh, for uh, having me on. And, you know, I just started listening to you guys about two months or so ago. And, um, yeah, you guys are legit. I'm totally hooked. Um, it, it's awesome stuff. I, li I listen to you guys daily. Um, you know, just some background real quick on me is, you know, I'm 53, married. I have four kids. Um, I played athletics in college, both football and lacrosse. Um, never really lifted until after college. Um, it was all like, you know, basic Globo stuff. And then I crossfitted for about seven years, um, hurt my shoulder. And now I've been lifting for the last, call it three years. Um, have never really followed a program at all. Um, and I, I just finished uh, week two of advanced calendar uh, maps anabolic. Um, yeah, and it's pretty awesome. Um, I'm actually already seeing, you know, small strength gains, um, but it's pretty sweet. But on to my question, um, I know there's a, a range of rest time. It says up to three minutes. And I was curious how different rest times would affect end results. Uh, for example, if I just like, if I'm doing like a back squat and I hit one rep, then I rest three minutes at a heavier weight. How would that impact results if, you know, I was doing say three reps with a lower weight at a less of a rest time, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes total sense. Really, really good question. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. So here's the deal with, with rest periods. <clears throat> I would say anywhere between... On the low, low end, 30 seconds to on the high end, I don't know, five minutes, maybe even longer, you're going to see muscle and strength gains within those. Uh, the lower okay. end, the lower end, more stamina and strength stamina on the higher okay. end, more just kind of pure strength. Now, now here's where okay. it gets, here's where it gets confusing. If you look at studies and this is the, this is one of the, the problems with studies is they'll compare things head to head in like a 16 week period and they'll say or less yeah, or less. Right. And they'll say, okay, we took two groups of, of college aged males, usually what it is. And this group rested for three minutes and this group rested for 60 seconds. And they'll say who built more muscle and strength. And at the end of the study, it shows that the three minute group built more muscle and strength. Okay. Now that study's correct, but the problem is that just like anything, your body stops kind of responding really well when it starts to get, you know, for lack of a better term, used to a style of training. So you take somebody, mm. like I'll give you an example. Uh, Stan Efferding has been on the show a couple times. He was a power lifter, then he became a bodybuilder. And he, he had a tough time winning his pro card. And one thing he did is he hired a train uh, um, Flex Wheeler, who was a popular bodybuilder of the 90s. And what Flex Wheeler did is he cut his rest times way down and had him do high rep sets. And Stan just built a lot of muscle. Now, it's because his stand was so used to training like a power lifter that it was this new novel stimulus and it and it just totally worked. So the 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 I guess the short story is they all have value. You want to be able to cycle through all of them. They're going to feel different when you're doing them, um, but they all have a lot of value. So that's why when you see a program like MAPS Anabolic or any of our other programs, we tend to have you go through different rep ranges for phases. And oftentimes, rip, uh, you know, rest periods. So, if there's a rest period that you've been doing consistently for a long time now, mm -hmm. I would say change it to either resting longer or shorter, depending where you're at. And of course, you'll have to adjust the weight, and it's going to feel very different. Sure, yeah. but they're sure. they're all going to work for you. But also realize okay. too, the principle of specificity applies. So. Um, as we're going through these like rest periods to try and stay consistent within a few weeks, you know, three to four weeks. Um, so that way your body can, can fully, um, you know, acquire this, this skill, uh, and, and get good at it. And so that way that we phase through these and, and try to make sure that we're on top of this. So we don't hit those inevitable plateaus with that, but that's why we do that. We don't just, you know, add in, uh, like these long rest period and short rest periods and kind of confuse the body that way. It's, it's a lot more effective mm. to kind of stay within that framework for a good three to four weeks. A good generic okay. rule of thumb is where you suck at the most is where the, the gains lie. 
So if you're okay. so let let's say you be being a guy who did CrossFit for seven years, you probably have a tendency to keep the workout moving, not very long rest periods. So if I got a guy totally. like so if I got a guy like that, I love taking him and going like, hey, we're gonna rest for three plus minutes, bro, yeah. and then we're gonna stack more weight on this, and that is gonna be challenging for that avatar because for seven years he's trained in this way of short rest periods, so he he tends to do that very well. So whatever you suck at tends to be where the best gains lie. So that's kind of a good rule of thumb that if you know if you know that you could cut the, sh the rest period shorter and you, and you like that, it's easy. Well, you're probably going to get more out of the longer rest periods and loading heavier weight. Cool. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to do. But it's it's totally it's definitely like a transition or a change. I'm like pacing around the gym like with my stopwatch. Um, <laughs> But, but you see the strength. I mean, it's wild. I mean, I mean it's like yeah. every session, every foundational workout. I only go up a little bit, but it's, I feel like I can get more reps, but I'm just, I, I need to stay within the program yeah, too, not let my ego get involved. I t and tell you what, that's the right Perfect. attitude yeah. and you're going to reap the benefits for having, yeah. but for doing that. Just trust the it's process. That mental discipline you got to yeah. apply. Yeah. And, and if you, if this is your first real MAPS program following, if you start to follow a yeah. second or third one, you're going to start to see how we integrate all those different tempos and rest periods and so you know they really were designed with that idea that you don't just follow one indefinitely you follow one run it maybe once or twice then you go on to another program and as you as you see as you go through each program we introduce all these different philosophies so you're constantly getting the gains and results so if you trust the process i promise we won't let you down chris, chris the next yeah. the next one would be maps performance that's where i would go next after maps anabolic Okay, maps performance and okay, yeah, because I'm totally gonna cycle through them. So I'm, I'm psyched. Uh, yeah, I'm psyched to have uh, found out about you guys for sure. And again, thanks, thanks a lot for taking the time, guys. You got yeah, it. Right let's, uh, we're gonna we're gonna send you over maps performance, and then the next one after that would be oh, aesthetic. Cool. So we'll we'll send you over maps performance for free, and then after you're done with performance, I'd move awesome. over to aesthetic. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, guys. All you right, Chris. It, All right. Good question. So, yeah, you know, so I'm going to just say right now exactly what the challenge is going to be for everybody listening who does what we just said. Here's what's going to happen. <laughs> you're going to change to a new rest period, and then you're going to be like, oh, my God, <laughs> yeah, this is the thing. <laughs> this works. <laughs> and then you're going to stay in that stupid uh -huh. rest period for too long yeah, <laughs> and, and, and plateau again. And and I'm a, I t I did this. It's how we all got here. Oh yeah. my god! It's how we all got here. Time and we time all have our preferences, you yeah. know, like coming in. That's just how it works. Especially when you feel those gains yeah. from a new rest period or a new yeah. rep, you know, range. And oh my god, this is it. This is what I got to do. And then you end up staying it for too long. Justin said it earlier: three to four weeks, six weeks tops. Then yeah, six switch. Six weeks max. Don't yeah. wait until you plateau. Switch before you plateau. That's the way to do it. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com. And check out all of our guides. We have fitness guides for almost everybody, for almost every fitness goal. You can also find us all on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 